Ladies and gentlemen, people of royalty, good morning. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the video. Today, we're going to be taking on the Johto PTS Elite Four. It ends in two hours, the PTS. That's when it's shut down forever. So today, we're going to go ahead and try to take care of it. We're going to go ahead and try to get things done. It was pretty difficult to get to this point in only two days, but we made it. And here is the team we're rocking with. Quite literally. We have Geodude, level 12. This is our Stealth Rock Sturdy Setter. He is going to be a core piece in our victory. We have our Starter of Choice. Kind of regretted a little bit throughout the run, but our Typhlosion. Lava Plume, Flame Charge for speed. Shadow Ball for coverage. Smoke Screen for utility. Not the best move pull, but you know what? Looks fucking cool. It's hard not to love him. For Alligator, the king of our run. The absolute demon, the absolute monster who carried pretty much every second of everything. He was phenomenal. Really great IVs. Mild nature allows him to be mixed to some extent, but thankfully we don't have to do that. We have Crunch, Superpower, Waterfall, Ice Fang. Best move pull by far. Best Pokemon by far in the run. I'm excited to abuse him. Ampharos, a super solid secondary Pokemon. Discharge for high para chances. Power Gem for coverage. Signal Beam is really good in this E4 run specifically because they actually have a Psychic and a Dark type Gym Leader, I believe. But I've never done this before. This is my first time attempting the Johto Elite Four. We're going to go ahead and jump into it. My cash stack is also extremely high right now due to some generous donations for people on the on the servers. I haven't used any of it to actually get any potions or anything um, or any like help via that. That was really just for fun to see if we could uh, get even semi-close. They lowered the ho -Oh amount, by the way, to one bill. Are they trying to tease us? <laughs> man, they're so confident we couldn't get it. Oh, man, if only. If only. But anyways, maybe we'll try to tackle that after if we have any free time. Let's go ahead and actually jump into the Elite Four. The first attempt. The first run. Now, you don't get healed after every trainer which is really unfortunate and actually really hurts my geodude strat but i might spam revives for him because of that but you do get like permanent progress so if i beat the first one i don't have to defeat them again so this will be interesting let me go ahead and jump into our first battle fellas good luck good luck good luck good luck good luck only had two days to get this far two days to defeat the johto e4 from from scratch not having any any you know help from alternative accounts or anything. So we're gonna set up. We're gonna live obviously with our sturdy. That's the point. Sturdy stealth rock. This is a strategy that is super good in the mainline games, but not if you flinch. Not if you flinch the way my Geo dude just did. So unfortunately, that kind of kills our strat. I'm trying to give us a way around it. I don't think so. I think that just kills the strategy. I think I'd go ahead and just uh, try to, you know, use Stealth Rocks and let him go down. Unfortunately, rest in peace, Geo dude. You could not set Stealth Rocks against the Zatu. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. But what are you supposed to do? You know, what can you do? Now, my best bet. Well, should I go into Feraligator here? Should I go into Jotodile? We saw Air Slash. This thing could have Thunderbolt coverage. Um, I feel like my best bet is going to be Ampharos. I don't see it having any coverage for it. Let's go ahead and jump into the big sheepy boy. All right, facing down. Zatu, as Ampharos, we obviously go for Discharge. Really simple. Super effective, plus Stab, plus we have access to Magnet. Now, Future Sight. We're going to have to keep track of that. We do one-shot the Zatu. Future Sight happens, what, after one or two turns? How many turns is it until Future Sight actually happens? We'll have to double-check that on Google, honestly. Really good one-shot from the Ampharos, though. But that'll be something to watch out for. I want to switch over to Spiro to, to tank that Future Sight. Okay, Future Sight damage happens two turns later. So I'll have this turn and then the next turn it'll happen. I'll make a switch over to it or try to deal with it in some way. Uh, thankfully, we do have Signal Beam into Espion. I don't see a reason for us to switch as well. I'm going to go ahead and go for the Signal Beam attack. Side Shot gets us for 40%. That's not too bad, not too shabby. Let's see if we can return with 65.7% damage. Definitely taking the lead there, which is super solid. Citrus Berry does proc, gaining some HP, but it's still in kill range of the Signal Beam. Now, if I am to stay in this turn... If I am to stay in this turn, tank a Psy Shock and kill the Espion in response, I would die to the Future Sight. So what I'm actually going to do, I don't know how this interaction actually works, but we're going to test. I'm going to switch over to Spiro and essentially let it die, sacrifice Switch, and then I'm hoping that the Future Sight just procs after. 
then I can dodge it fully. But we'll see. That would be my guess. Does something else have to tank the future site now? That's kind of unfortunate. I wasn't sure there's a good way around this. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring in Dawn Fan then. He's my weakest, my weakest link here. The future site didn't proc there. I don't know if I counted turns wrong or if it happens like on the third turn technically. If he has Psy Shock, it might not be able to kill me though. I'm gonna go ahead and go for a Magnitude. I could have gone for a Scary Face. That probably would have been more beneficial to lower its speed. But my Ampros is faster. It definitely would have been better. Definitely a misplay by me there. I wonder if the future site's just gone now. So it low rolled. So I lived this attack and now I can Scary Face, triple its speed for the rest of the battle. It's actually really good for me. Okay, Espeon's speed being lowered is actually really, really good for me. Uh, my best bet here, I can actually just go ahead and use this turn to potion on my Ampros really comfortably. Gain some HP on it. I think the future site's just gone. It didn't say that it actually activated, but I think it's just gone, which is interesting. So the Spiro trick, I guess, technically did work, but there was no text indicating that it did. Uh, so now I can go into Ampharos and signal beam and kill this. Here we go. Nice. Perfect. And we, we have that advantage because of the speed. It's now we're Ampharos versus Jinx. Signal beam or power gem. I feel like probably just power gem just for the it's five extra base power. I could just go signal beam for the 10% confuse rate. Honestly, that might be better versus like the five, you know, base power difference is so absolutely minimal. I don't think the thing hits with any like super big attack that I'm super worried about. I'm just going to go for the signal beam. Ice beam is 36. Signal beam does 65. Ampharos is putting me at a really good advantage here. We got the 10% Confuse on Jinx as well. It still hits through. That's a crit free. It's a crit Ice Beam as well. Crit Ice Beam doing 54%. Okay, this is a tough one because this thing is four times weak to bug. One of the few Pokemon four times weak. And Executor is also pretty slow. But at the same time, so is Ampharos. Executor's base speed is somewhere around Ampharos's. I have level advantage. I'm, I kind of just want to go for the Signal Beam and hope that I'm faster here. Yes, I am. Okay. I wasn't sure like how much it's really close. But I, okay, thankfully I am faster there. I know Amphros is 55 base that speed. I think Executor is around the same, if not around 50. Slowbro comes in. I'm faster than this. I can go for a discharge and this should KO. Nice. Pretty easy first battle. Obviously, we lost a lot of mons, but I'm okay with having to heal and like take resets to get through the E4. We only have to do it once within two hours. First trainer down. Let's go in and move on. This person named Salami carrying me through. I appreciate that. Yeah, Ampharos was incredible there. Actually did so much. I'm going to go ahead and potion up and try to take on this next person uh, with my resources, obviously. But it's okay if I wipe here and just have to come back. It's really not a big deal. It honestly might even be more beneficial. The issue with reviving Geodude as well is that I have to heal him up to full HP to get the sturdy proc. It's kind of awkward. I'm just going to try it with this team. And like, there's no hard feelings if I can't beat him. Is he the dark type? Okay, we'll see what I can do. There's really no hard feelings if I can't beat him here. I'm not going to like super harp on it or worry about it too much. Uh, we'll just kind of wing it. And if I can do an, an one more person, it's it's cool. Oh, it's Koga from Kanto. Okay, so he's a poison type. Okay, um, I think I'm safe here to just... I probably just go for an X attack on my Feraligator. I really hope he doesn't poison me. Turn one. That's the only stare here. And if, I, if he does, I just antidote. I'm going to X attack and go for a waterfall spam sweep. Gun shot. Hits it. 70% accurate. Honestly, it doesn't, doesn't do that much for like a 120, 125 base power move. So now I just Waterfall Spam, and I'm pretty sure I should just one-shot everything. All right, Crobat up next. Now, this one is kind of tough because he doesn't outspeed me, obviously. Um, Ice Bang or Waterfall is a good question here. So with Waterfall, we obviously have 80 plus Stab, which equals 120. And then Ice Fang's 65 doubled, which is what, 130? But the issue is we also get 20% from our Mystic Water. So I think that after the 20%, Waterfall actually ends up being more damage than Ice Fang. Although we don't have a 20% chance to flinch because we're going to be slower. We have a 10% freeze here. But I don't know if it matters. I'm going to go for the waterfall play. It should be slightly more damage. Acrobatics might be enough to take me out there. Acrobatics crit is enough to sweep me off my feet. Oh no. That was so unfortunate. That was really unfortunate. For Alligator really could have swept there. Man. So now I just go over to Ampharos and go for a discharge. That was super unfortunate. I mean, that flying gem acrobatics crit is a ripperoni, man. AI cheating? No, that was a, that was a moment, man. All right, next up is Venomoth. Which is this thing? I always forget if it's 
this is one of those few weird bug types that's actually it's actually one of the few non bug flying types i think it's bug poison i think it doesn't have the flying type um so it's only one, uh two times a week to power gem as opposed to actually being four times a week like so many you know mons are um i'm gonna go ahead and go for the power gem i guess still bug buzz doing 34 percent to me power gem doing what i'm still surprised at one shot it though wow that was kind of oh i crit a lucky crit for me i i'm like 100 sure i could be wrong i'm like very very sure that i do not one shot there without that crit that crit is very important to my one shotting there i'm gonna power gem i'm faster than this one at least like 30 or 40 base stat speed area dose 80 percent i'm very sure certain i do not one shot the what's called there okay this fight's winnable now this fight's winnable we can take out two before having to heal reset we'll go ahead and bring in our area dose or not area dose our uh Typhlosion. I'm going to flame charge here to get the speed proc just in case the next Pokemon is faster. I should still be able to kill it and get a free speed proc in case it's a fast Pokemon in the back. Since Ariados is so slow, you want to abuse that and it's low. Let's see what the Pokemon is. Fortress. Okay, it didn't really matter. I would have been able to outspeed and kill it no matter what, but it could have explosion here. So this is the funny thing. I'm going to Lava Plume here, get its sturdy proc, and then it might explode on me. And if it explodes on me, I don't know how the tiebreaker works. Hopefully it just doesn't kill. Gyro Ball okay we haven't seen item it could be custat berry explosion still i would absolutely not put that past the po yup is it cuss okay it's custap gyro ball i was literally gonna say i would not put that past the pokemon devs for a split second if this thing was custat berry explosion that would have made too much sense it probably still is but it just chose to use gyro ball there Whew. elite four koga defeated two out of four done and we still have a rival at the end of course someone has a scissor here salami which is pretty cool it's a cool pokemon to take into it uh, look at the aesthetics, man. The Johto aesthetics coming through. So here, I'm not going to lie. I think I'm just going to sa sacrifice and just reset. I'm not even going to try to... I mean, I'm going to try my best, I guess, by spamming Lava Plume. If you count that as your best. I don't see myself winning this one. This is going to be a GG, fellas. Yeah, Lava Plume also only does 55% to Hitmonlee. How is that possible, man? Typhlosion's been kind of a weak boy, unfortunately. But that's okay. We'll take the quick reset and show you guys what that actually looks like. So with this, you, do, you don't get healed after every battle but if you go back into the e4 you'll like continue from where you left off so i'm gonna continue off at the fighting guy or i should be able to i should be able to just run around them or not wait did it get changed okay i was genuinely terrified there okay whew genuinely was terrified genuinely was horrified but no you can just talk to them all they'll be like oh we already we already you already beat me Whew. dude genuinely fucking jaw dropped i was like wow am i actually gonna this is this changes the whole strategy for the next fucking two hours okay let's take on this fighting nerd um i don't want to lead geodude into this guy i don't even think it's worth it because i'm pretty sure he just kills him um with like fake out there's a really good chance that the hitmon leaves and all this we're gonna fake out so i don't want to waste my i want to try to actually use my stealth rock sturdy memer so that dude i actually was so scared okay let's save that let's lead uh into the fighting guy what should we lead with do we just do we just lead with like totodile like gator we could go we could lead uh we could lead typhlosion and go x special into lava plume spam i'm also okay with that but it just feels like it's been letting me down. The Typhlosion's been letting me down the whole time. So it's tough to believe in him at a point where it matters. We could just do for Alligator. What do we we probably just spam Waterfall for Alligator. I don't know if we're fast enough to outspeed everything. Let's try the Typhlosion strat. Let's try to give him a redemption arc. Okay, Hitmon Lee lead again. Let's just go ahead and go for the X special. A really cool thing about X item is that if your opponent fake outs you, you still get to use the item on the turn they fake out you, which is really, really good. But he goes for high jump kick, doing 72%, which is extremely high. I should be able to kill him now, I think, with the Lava Plume, which is really nice. Am I, am I in Blaze range as well? I'm also in Blaze range. So now I'm plus two special attack in Blaze range. Now, the issue is this thing obviously has sturdy. So uh, that's unfortunate. But what are you going to do about it, right? Um, the only thing I can do is go ahead and Lava Plume take care of his sturdy and then just go ahead and, and and let my typhlosion go down essentially it's just not a great play here yeah that's, just, that's, that's all you can do that's all you can do that's okay 
could have been a lot worse and uh and now we can just go ahead and bring in pretty much whatever to take him out uh what would we like to bring in probably for alligator i guess i'm assuming this thing has it's should i should i double out to spiro in case of custap explosion i don't think i need to but we'll see yeah i, was, I don't think i need to but I, it would have been safe if i wanted to do that all right my champ is up next this might be the point well so part of me wants to go for an x attack here but i'm scared of no guard dynamic punch i'm just gonna waterfall spam and hope for a flinch and go for two shot i could x attack here but i'm scared yep this yeah, exactly because confusion is a pain in the ass so what i'm actually gonna do here now is i'm gonna i'm gonna sacrifice switch over to bureau to get rid of my confusion so you can just switch out on statuses like that which is at least nice but yeah i hate no guard dynamic punch 100% confusion is a pain in like almost all any like Pokemon E4, you'll always see this. It's a huge pain. Okay, for Alligator back then, confusion gone. We do outspeed. We go for a waterfall. Easy peasy, take out the Machamp. Goodbye, my friend. Two pokes left. Hitmonchan comes in. Should be pretty safe to just waterfall spam. 85%. It's nice that I outspeed things enough. Drain punch. Okay, that's fine for me. I did quite a bit of damage though. Did I have a, a gem? perhaps nope okay outspeed still take out the hitmonchan last pokemon him on top is the last guy so this guy does go ahead and intimidate i almost want to switch here but i don't think it i think it's still a two shot yeah so i don't think it changes anything so i'm just gonna stay in and go for the waterfall and hope for a flinch maybe no flinches that's okay let my Feraligator go down and finish him off with ampharos ampharos could technically have a tough time here but i should be fine i should be fine Uh, he does go for rest. This thing has pretty high, like, special defense, if I'm not mistaken, in terms of base stats. I think having rest could be really, really annoying. Resto, Chesto. We can get it paralyzed, at least, though, now, since it woke up. 30% chance on the para. Do we outspeed? No, he outspeeds against the rest spam. That's okay. We'll be okay. There we go. There's the discharge. Enough to kill the hitmon top. Probably not going to be able to kill the next guy without continuing back through, but healing and everything, but we'll see how it goes. I mean, I'm down to try to take on the next person with just Ampharos. That would be pretty insane. I'd be pretty surprised, but it'd also be wicked impressive. It's this, Is it the Psychic Memer? Maybe it's possible. Dark type. Maybe it's possible. If I play this right, if I set my Stealth Rocks up and then I'm able to X Special or X Speed probably on the Ampharos to be able to Signal Beam Spam, this might be winnable. I actually might be able to sleep this with, with Ampharos if I play properly. I'm going to do Stealth Rocks, of course. Don't forget, like, a Sleep Powder or something. Okay, Whew. No Sleep Powder, thankfully. Setting up Rocks here to break Focus Ashes. I'm sure she'll have, like, a, you know, a Gengar or something of that nature with the Focus Ash. It'll be a huge, huge pain. You went for a Toxic on me. I'm going to get a free Sand Attack off against the Vile Plume to cripple a little bit, which is nice. Okay, now it's time for Ampharos to come in. Do its job. Try to sweep. We did get a Sand Attack off against the Vile Plume, so this might be a good spot to go ahead and try to X Speed and X Special. I'm going to X... I think I actually X speed first. Ampharos is just so slow. Yes, I'm glad I did that. Ampharos is so slow, I just need the speed advantage way more. I could actually... So what I'm going to do here... I, I'm going to try to sweep this. I'm going to X speed here. And then X special here. And I think I just sweep. I think I can just sweep this, which is pretty sick. Oh, but there's a swagger to give me confusion. That actually makes things kind of awkward. Is there any berry or anything I can like use to snap out of confusion? That's kind of hilarious. I would love to do that if there is. That is so funny. It's so specific that that actually is super awkward for me. Okay, we'll see how things go. We're going to spam signal beam. And I'll try to potion whenever possible. Hurt myself in confusion. That's okay. Unfortunate. 65% from foul play. Oh no. I think I'm just fucked, right? That's actually nuts. I think the only way I win this, I think I have to risk. Does full heal actually get rid of confusion though? I don't think so, guys. Full restore does. Does full restore actually heal confusion? Any status? Okay, let's try it. I have a couple so we can try it, I guess. If we can go full HP and heal the meme. Snapped out. Okay. We'll take it. Foul play does a lot there. We get a static proc. Okay. Well, now we can fish. Wait, now we can fish, boys. Now we can play the fishing games. Does the Hyper Potion heal enough for me here? Yeah. So now I can Hyper Spam and hope for a Paralyze. I'm actually, I can still sweep. We can still do it. No, foul play crit. Dude. 
Oh, Petrowski luck coming through nice and strong. That's okay. We can just come back. It's not a big deal, but it is, it is hilarious. It is hilarious. Okay, third time's the charm here. Easy peasy. I'm going to keep Geodude in the back for this fight up here. And then we'll actually, we'll just keep him for uh, for the rival fight if we can make it to the next one. We should be able to do this fight really easily if I can just set up with my Ampharos. Let's jump into it. This should be a pretty easy fight if I can set up strong. No, but this time they led Umbreon against me, dude. They know. <laughs> they know the strats. Oh, no. I'm going to go ahead and just signal beam then. The fucking swagger strats. Dude, the swagger foul play Umbreon is brutal. Please hit. Okay. Whew. I'm going to get one. I'm just going to switch out, man. I'm going to switch out because this, this is too much for me. It's so brutal, man. Uh, do I just switch over to like Dawn fan? Maybe Dawn fan got some really good chip on us. So let's just do that. Okay, foul play does 35% to the Dawn. We'll chip it down. It does have moonlight though. So I don't even know if this chip is like going to end up being relevant at all. I don't think scary facing matters. Wait, does, does Umbreon outspeed my, my Ampharos? I don't think so, right? No, it did. No, 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 it did. So this is actually relevant. Yeah, let me let me scary face this. Oh, I should have scary faced it. He did outspeed. I'm an idiot. I messed up. I should have definitely lowered this thing's speed. This is really tough, man. I'm not going to lie. Let's just... Should I just go to Typhlosion and spam Lava Plume or something here? I don't want to go for Alligator Superpower here. It doesn't feel very... I don't think it kills. I genuinely... I, I thought about it, but I genuinely don't want to go it. He has the Flash Fire Switch? No fucking shot, dude. I'm getting fucking outplayed to the moon by this AI. Oh, no. What the fuck? Okay, now we make the Fralligator play. Now we make the sacrifice switch over to Fralligator. I didn't want to go to Fralligator there yet. I don't think it kills. I, I, it would take way too much damage from foul play. Insane foul play damage. But now I can go Fralligator against this. Actually fucking rolled and smoked. Dude, this guy is fucking destroying me. Uh, okay, I got waterfall here. Easy one shot. Okay, we're coming back. We're five D chessing yourself, based. Okay, vile plume comes out. Obviously, it has Giga Drain. I could probably just make the dude. Fralidator just fucking has to carry everything. Is the issue? I probably just make the Typhlosion switch here on the Gator. That's fine. I stopped using fair. As soon as I stopped using Gator, I started losing. I, I just have to abuse the Gator, man. He's so much better than every Pokemon. Okay, here we go for a free. Could go for flame charge. I don't know if it matters. I'll just spam lava plume for max damage. In case of the switch. Here we, here we go. Easy one shot. Good positioning. Got rid of the flash fire. Launch crow comes out. I think I'm safe to spam lava plume here. I don't really care what it goes for. Let's see what it goes for though. Super power 37. Oh yeah, this is easy peasy for me. All right, Gengar comes out. It probably does KO me here before I get an attack off. But oh, I'm faster. I'm really surprised I'm faster there. 83% is nuts as well. I live the attack as well. If it poisons me, I think I die to the poison. Wow, that was honestly kind of nuts. I'm kind of surprised I lived that. I'm surprised I outspeed and live there. That actually is kind of nuts. That was actually kind of sick. So now we can see Umbreon. I can still beat the rival this with this like team setup. It's still possible. So now it's going to kill my Typhlosion. I can bring in for Alligator Superpower and finally finish off this battle and then revive my Typhlosion for the next fight. Okay, this is winnable. Okay, superpower. I should outspeed. That should finish it off. Okay, whew. this person taken care of. I'm going to go ahead and use all my revives, all my potions. There's no reason not to and just sort of heal things up and get ready for this last fight. This is the rival, fellas. This is Lance. People have been nonstop talking about how insanely strong Lance is. So I am definitely... It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to say the least. Okay, something else I can do after like healing everything and prepping for the fight. Something else I can actually go ahead and do this kind of Giga Brain strat. So now that I've gotten full use, wait, this thing can learn Dragon Pulse? Dragon Pulse is physical, correct? Well, now I need to double check before I actually teach it. But that like, I didn't know if Feraligatr could learn it. I was gonna teach it to uh, no, it's special. Okay, don't want to give it to Feraligatr then. We're gonna give it over to Ampharos. So now that I've, I could teach it over Cotton Guard. I don't know if I should do Cotton Guard or Signal Beam. Um, I don't really need signal beam anymore, but cotton guard is interesting. I could like turbo set up and sweep this on Ampharos, honestly, if I wanted to, I feel like I'm just going to read a cotton guard. I love the move. It's super interesting, but we're going to teach dragon pulse onto Ampharos like that. And that'll allow it to, uh, maybe do a little bit of sweeping. Maybe, maybe, maybe we do a little bit of sweeping. We'll see. Um, is everything prepped and ready? Do I need PP ups or PP max on anything? I do have those at my disposal that I haven't used yet. 
Uh, let's go ahead and we can elixir stuff as well. Here we have the Geo dude for this fight as well. Here we go. It's time for Lance, fellas. The final fight of the entire Johto PTS. It took me 18 in-game hours to get here. A very slow run. But a lot of it was AFKing for videos as well. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump into it. Dragonite. So we're going to be able to lead off with the Stealth Box, which is really, really good against Lance. Getting rocked up against Lance is so, so, so good here. Let's set him up. Dragon Claw. I live the sturdy. Get our rocks up. It's going to be so good for this fight. He has so many flying types and so many Pokemon like Dragonite. We also absorb his Dragon Claw gem or Dragon gem, which is really good. So now his Dragonite has no item. We go for a sand attack just in case something happens like he misses or goes for some weird attack or whatever. Okay. We have rocks up. We're against Dragonite. The obvious play here is to go Gator. I don't know who's faster here. I really want to go for X attack in case he switches. Obviously, I can one shot with Ice Fang. I'm going to go for X attack and see who's see like what he has, what's faster. I might go for X speed here after Draco Meteor comes out. I'm going to go ahead and play this really safe and potion after the Draco. A crit would be unfortunate, but we'll see how it plays out. I'm going to potion here. Go for an X speed after if possible, but we'll see what he does this turn. Dragon Claw does 42%. A crit would do 60 or so. I think I'm in crit range to kill. Um, I don't know if I'm faster or not. It's pretty close speed ties. No, Dragon Knight's 80 speed for alligator is what? I think it's also 80. 78, but I'm way I'm a slightly higher level. I don't know who's faster here. I'm faster. Okay. We take it. Okay, Dragonite taken care of with the Ice Fang. Gyarados comes in. We do get the Intimidate proc. He takes 25% from the rocks. That's why we set up those rocks. I don't think he could... He has Power Whip. That's what he has. He has Power Whip. And I think I might be faster still. He's 80 speed. Once, all these 80 speed Pokemon. I just go for the Crunch. And hope to do as much damage as possible. Only 44%. Not great, man. I'm going to be honest. Get the Defense Drop, though. Power Whip does take out the Gator. It's a little afraid of that. But at the same time, I'm okay with it. I can revive for later if I really need. Um, he shouldn't have a way to super hit my Ampharos unless he's EQ. I don't know if the Gyarados is packing EQ, which like heavily, heavily impacts what I do here decision-wise. Does anybody happen to know? I'm going to go to Ampharos and go for the X speed. I like that play. Let's go for the X speed. If he has EQ, I should tank it at least. Waterfall. He gets stat. It shouldn't matter. Okay, this should be good. Okay, now I can just go ahead and go for a Discharge to KO. I could go for like an X Special or a Heal as if I really, if I really want a Turbo set up, but I think I can just go ahead and take it from here. He has four pokes left still though. Tyranitar is up next. Oh man, I don't have a great way to deal with this. I mean, Signal Beam hits, I guess, but I don't, I don't think I kill. There's no fucking shot I kill this, right? I think I just get off my chip. Only 28%. That's pathetic. We get a Static proc, honestly. We live at 2 HP. Get a static proc. Sandstorm takes me out, though. That's unfortunate. Dude, I'm in a really bad position here. This is going to be a really tough fight. Uh, my best play here is to go Spiro and, and uh, probably Max Revive the Feraligator. Let's go for Max Revive. This is, this is, this is tough, though. The, the Paralyze is nice. I can go ahead and go into Feraligator and then go for Superpower. That's my best play for sure, right? Yeah. Go to Feraligator, do the superpower, one-shot him or hit whatever he brings in. Super hard. Nice. Take out Tyranitar. Okay, Ampharos comes in, and I obviously want to switch out here. I'm going to go ahead and head over to Donphan. Donphan might actually be able to get some value here, possibly against the Amphi. Discharge, obviously, we get pretty easily. Okay, Magnitude, we just throw up here. Dragon Pulse comes out in 55%. That's fine. I'm trying to get some value. I could have gone for like a heal or something here as well, or a revive. Magnitude 8. Doing, I feel like it's worth though to go for this. We proc the citrus, which is really nice. Um, as long as we can bring in Raligator after and go for like whatever kills it. Um, I die, right? To its I die to its Dragon Balls and it's faster. My best player is just go for some sort of revive or potion. So I'm gonna go for a revive on my Ampharos, I guess. Reviving my Ampharos doesn't feel great since it's pretty slow. So being at 50% while slow is kind of brutal. Okay, I think I always just go for Alligator here. 
but I'm a little paranoid. Should I just go Typhlosion instead? Honestly, I think I just go Typhlosion. Because I don't care about Typhlosion's HP as much. It's faster. And I don't I really don't want to get staticked. Yeah, I don't I don't think I one shot. I don't I don't want to get static on my Feraligator. It's super annoying. I'm, yeah, I'm okay with this trade. Taking 40% on my on my guy to take out the Ampros. Is it two Pokemon left of this? Okay, two Pokes left. We still have plenty of heals and everything. Aerodactyl comes in. This is obviously gonna be way faster than me. The Stealth Rocks do a nice doing a nice job. Um pretty sure he outspeeds me and like kills me. Do I need to make a switch over to Fra to like Gator here that badly though? Do I just stay in and go for Lava Plume and go for like Burn and Chip and whatever? I actually live this attack. Do I get flinched though? 30% chance. That's honestly fair. Uh, yeah, that's that's a fine side effect I haven't seen yet. Um, Is it worth keeping him up? I think it might be worth keeping Typhlosion up. I'm going to go over to Gator and tank the Rock Slide on this. This might be kind of an int, but we'll see. 30% double edge. He went for the double edge. Uh, now I can just go for Waterfall. Just don't flinch me here. A flinch here would really suck. Okay, that's fine. We take out the Aerodactyl. One Pokemon left. Kingdra is the last mon. Kingdra's really, really powerful though. This does actually make things wicked awkward. Um, my best bet is just to go for Crunch and chip it down a decent amount. Having Typhlosion left kind of sucks here, but it's not, honestly not terrible. I go for Crunch. I should be fine with no healing stuff and just like chipping it down. Draco, let's see if it has, I mean, it obviously kills me. Let's see if it has White Herb or anything. Or if, if the attack falls and there's no white herb to fix it, I just go Typhlosion here and get as much chip as possible. I think I just go for Shadow Ball. Technically go for Lava Plume and look for a Berm. Doesn't really matter here. Unless this thing is also like... Unless it's like Draco. A crit there is super nice. And the special defense drop. All of that matters. Waterfall takes me out. Now the only scary thing here is... My Ampharos is slower. So if my Ampharos... Oh, this is actually kind of scary. If my Ampharos can't tank one attack here, I just lose. But it's minus two special attack. What did it use after Waterfall? I just need my Ampharos to tank one attack and I win. But I'm kind of scared here. We just go for it. Yes, we tank one attack, 37%. Waterfall, it gets static. We Dragon Pulse. Whew, and there it is, fellas. There it is. The Johto PTS completed. The Elite Four completed in only two days. It wasn't easy. For someone who even plays this game for a living, it wasn't easy. If you are someone who completed the Elite Four during the PTS, congratulations. You did a fucking good job. And I think it's like actually so much hard work and effort and it should, shouldn't go unnoticed. It should go super appreciated. If you're someone who played the PTS at all, that's awesome. You know, it's putting your time for the game. And if you're someone who played the PTS to completion like this, that is wildly impressive. Go ahead and talk to Presser to talk to everybody and just cherish and enjoy our victory. It definitely wasn't easy. It was one of the easier regions, I would say, out of the ones in Pokemon. But like th the issue is the time frame. Like if, if you had like a week to play this region, it would be 10 times easier. But the fact that it was only two days and I'm literally completing it now, like with an hour and 15 minutes before server shut down is just it all just lines up to be so insane. Right. Wow. And we're, there we are. Sent back home so quickly thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed today's stream and or video it means the fucking world like the video and stream if you if you did enjoy it dislike if you didn't that's totally okay as well subscribe to the channel for daily pokemon content follow the twitch for streams like this monday through thursday at 12 p.m et the discord link is down below if you're interested in that and if you want to go above and beyond and support the content youtube memberships twitch primes twitch subs paypal and venmo all help out a ton and it's all super appreciated but anyways i'm gonna go ahead and fly up to Elite Four. Thank you guys for all being here. You guys are all so sweet. Um, let's go ahead and go heal and go uh, collect our mail. I'll see you guys later. Have a great day. Peace. Hey, thanks so much for watching until the very end of the video. I super appreciate that. And if your name is on this list, I appreciate you even more. Thank you so much for going above and beyond in supporting the channel, allowing me to stay full time and trying to make the best Pokemon content possible. Thanks again for watching.